So just a quick video today on what I've been doing the last couple of days. I've, I've taken a couple of days off from recording video, mainly because I noticed I really needed to spend some time cleaning up some of my personal configs, all of my tiling window manager configs. I needed to spend a little bit of time on my GitLab, especially with the readme pages, the documentations for some of my tiling window manager configs was not correct. It was giving you guys bad information such as it told you wrong key bindings and you know I, I've neglected to keep that stuff up. So the last couple of days I spent some time with all of my tiling window manager configs, well most of them, cleaning up the configs. I'm talking about hours you know I, I completely rewrote my Qtile config which was quite a chore and I wanted to standardize on key bindings because the key bindings were not consistent between the various tiling window managers I use and now it is a more consistent experience. If you pull down my Qtile config and you also pull down my Xmonad config, the key bindings are very similar now in those window managers where before for doing the same thing in Qtile as Xmonad, sometimes you had different key bindings and I didn't like that. So I wrote a very short blog post over at distrotube.com. If you go to the blog tab at distrotube.com, standardized key bindings across all tiling window managers. I give some of my thoughts exactly why I think this is important, having standardized key bindings across these tiling window managers, at least when you guys are getting the configs from one source, me. It doesn't make sense to have a different command to open a terminal in one tiling window manager as opposed to the next, or a different command to launch dmenu in one tiling window manager as opposed to the next so I standardized commands now super plus enter or mod key plus return opens a terminal mod shift return opens a run launcher mod tab cycles through the available layouts mod shift C closes a window mod shift R restarts the window manager mod shift Q quits the window manager etc etc and I will show you some of this in action the other thing is I wanted to clean up some of my documentation over at my dot files repository on my GitLab so for example, if I go to my Xmonad page, I kind of updated it a little bit. Um, of course, you get a screenshot, but you also get the new key bindings, which was a real problem before. The readmes were not correct. They oftentimes gave incorrect key bindings previously. I really haven't spent any time on the documentation in my dot files, probably in a year or more, and I'm not kidding. Uh, I should be ashamed of that, and I am a little bit. I really should focus a little more on this because this repository is actually quite popular. I know a lot of you guys, you know, grab my configs and I really need to keep this stuff up to date. So let me switch to the desktop. I am in DWM today. So key bindings now. Any of you guys that go and grab any of my configs from GitLab, uh, depending on the tiling window manager, I haven't standardized all of them yet, but I've gotten through Xmonad, Qtile, Awesome, and DWM. So super enter should bring up a terminal. That terminal that it's going to look for is Alacrity. If you don't have Alacrity installed in your on your system, you either should install Alacrity. You can use my Alacrity configs too to get it to look like this. Or you should change the config so that the terminal is not set to Alacrity. Set it to ST or URXVT or Xterm or whatever it is you use. But by default, super enter opens a terminal. Now let me open a second terminal here. Now mod J and K should shift focus between the two windows. Mod shift J and K, well let me launch HTOP and mod shift J and K will actually swap places or actually just rotate the window with focus through the stack. Mod shift C to close, mod shift C to close, mod shift enter opens D menu. You see D menu at the top and I could launch something here in D menu. I'll launch another terminal and let me open one more terminal and this time I'll do HTOP again. One other thing I needed to standardize is because I use different key bindings for this in pretty much every single tiling window manager and partly it's because the default settings in these tiling window managers was different for this function. But you know what? I think it makes sense for mod H and mod L, H for left, L for right to do the expand shrink functionality, which is resizing the window. So that's mod H, mod L, would go back the other direction and get it back to the center. 
One other thing I wanted to do was because multi-monitor systems are a big thing with tiling window managers. That's why so many of us use tiling window managers that have a multi-monitor system. I have three monitors as I wanted to standardize on the key bindings to switch focus with the monitors. So mod W E R. So mod W goes to monitor one, mod E goes to monitor two, mod R goes to monitor three. And that is the default key bindings, I think in X monads. So I just standardized that for all of them. Any of them that have that functionality, W E R for one, two, three. I also standardized just switching focus among the monitors, depending on the direction. So mod period switches focus, the monitors going right mod comma which is focus of the monitors going left. I hope that makes sense. I am not actually recording more than one monitor to show you guys this. Let me switch back to the desktop. Let me open up my Qtile config because this is important for those of you that have grabbed my Qtile config and have been using it. And I know many, many, many people are using my Qtile config. It's probably one of the most popular things I have over on my GitLab. I completely rewrote this thing. Let me open up a split window here. So if I do space WV for a vertical split, and in this pane, I'm just gonna go ahead and open the directory editor. So space space, I'm in Doom Emacs, by the way. And I have my old config saved in here for comparison, because I wanted you guys to see the difference. So those of you that have seen me do videos about Qtile in the past, or have actually used my configs in the past, this is my old config here. And you see, the way I did it in the past is I'm not really a Python guru. I'm not a Pythonista. I know enough Python to be kind of dangerous. And the way I did it is I just defined a bunch of functions. Everything is a definition. The key bindings, you know, define the keys. If I go down, you know, I'm defining various colors, the init groups, the groups or the workspaces, the layouts, and pretty much everything at the bottom, you know, if name equal config main, and this is where all those things I defined are listed. And I thought, you know, that made sense, but I, I don't know Python, right? Right. I'm not a Python master, but some of you guys have seen that config and are like, you know what? I don't like the way you did that. For one thing, it's very different from the default config. For another thing, some of you guys that know a little programming are like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to define all that stuff. So what I did is I went back and took the default Qtile config. I found a copy of the default Qtile config on my system. And I pretty much tried to rewrite my config with the exact same functionality, but using the syntax, the same exact syntax. I also got rid of some extra cruft. There was some stuff in this config because the config is so old, things I didn't use anymore, some things that didn't even work. So I did clean up this config quite a bit. In my old config, I think I had like 10 colors defined here. And, you know, and the reason there's two colors for each line is because you can change it to a gradient if you'd rather have a gradient color. And I had 10 of these defined. And I'm looking through my config and I'm only using five colors in my Qtile config. I was like, why am I defining 10 different colors, but I only use five of them? You know, it's stuff like that, that I really spent some time cleaning up. This took some time just rewriting my Qtile config, basically starting over and rewriting the entire Qtile config. That, that thing took me a few hours the other day. And then I started doing the same thing with Xmonad. Now Xmonad didn't need a complete rewrite. The great thing about Haskell is you have no choice but to write Haskell a certain way because it's very particular as far as syntax and spacing and punctuation. And I wanted to get, eventually I need to get to i3, Erbs, Luft, BSPWM, and I want to have all my tiling window managers pretty much default to the same standardized key bindings. That way, eventually I'd like to maybe have a script, that, you know, an install script where you guys that want to try out my various config files in these tiling window managers, I just have a script that if you're running an Arch-based system, it just installs it and you're not completely clueless on the key bindings because the key bindings should be the same amongst all of them. I, I don't know when I will get around to that, but Cleaning up these config files is the first step in that. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few people. This episode was produced by Michael, Mitchell, Chris, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, Lambda, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. These guys, they're the producers of the show. Without them, this channel wouldn't be possible. The channel also wouldn't be possible without all of these guys. All these names you're seeing on the screen, each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen supports my work over on Patreon because... 
This channel is supported by you guys, the community. Now, if you would like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.